you by advanced excel training we're going through everything you need to know for the mrs expert exam remember to hit the like button and to subscribe in this video we're going through objective 3.2 the lookup functions we'll be looking at vlookup hlookup and index and match the vlookup function works by looking at the first column for the value that you specified it then looks across the columns and returns the value that it finds there as an example, we want to display the manager for each employee depending on their department. If we activate cell C3, we see the VLOOKUP function in the formula bar. Notice the arguments for the VLOOKUP function. Equals VLOOKUP, the lookup value, which is B3 or IT, the lookup table name or range, we're using E4, to G9, and we're using an absolute reference to lock the range because we'll be copying the formula. Then we have the number of columns that contains the required data, and we'll be using two. And lastly, we'll be using false for an exact match. The VLOOKUP function looks vertically down the leftmost column of the VLOOKUP table until it found a match for the text IT. The function then returned the value Felix Maddog, that is in the second column of the table, from the same row where the match was found. Things to keep in mind when working with VLOOKUP. If the range lookup is true or omitted, you must sort the values in ascending order, as the VLOOKUP will look down the columns for the closest available match. If the VLOOKUP doesn't find a match, it will return hashtag NA. If the column index number is less than 1, VLOOKUP will return hashtag value. And if the column index number is greater than the number of columns in the table array, VLOOKUP will return hashtag ref. To use the VLOOKUP function correctly, you need to have a spreadsheet laid out with a table of at least two columns. The first column in the table will contain the identifiers that the VLOOKUP function will look through for a match. In the example just shown, the identifiers are the company departments. This column can be referred to as the lookup column. The other columns in the table will contain the data that is associated with the identifiers. Your table can contain several columns, and you can specify which column VLOOKUP will return data from by adding a number corresponding to the given column in the function. In the previous example, we wanted VLOOKUP to return the managers, so we used the number 2, or the second column, as the argument in the function. If the table has 10 columns, and you want to return the data from the ninth column, you can use 9 as the argument. In our example, we can look up the senior managers for our employees by changing the column number to 3. As mentioned briefly before, the VLOOKUP function can take a final argument of either true or false. If you specify the final argument as false, the VLOOKUP will search for an exact match in the column of identifiers. If it cannot find an exact match, NA will be returned. In the following example, we will find an exact match using VLOOKUP. We'll be looking through the commission rates for each salesperson and then work out the amount of commission that they will get. To simplify matters, we have named the table Commission Rates, which will be used in the functions and formulas. On the Formula tab in the Functions Library group, click Lookup and Reference, and then click VLOOKUP. You can then enter the arguments. The lookup value will be A3 or Olivia Capman. The table array will be the commission rate. The column index number will be 2 because we want to, the answer to come from the second column. And our range lookup will be false to find an exact match. This means that the VLOOKUP will search the first column of the commission rates table for an exact match of A3 
or Olivia Catman. And if it's found, it will return the corresponding value in the second column, which is 6%. There is no commission rate that exactly matches Harper Bright, so NA will be returned in cell D8. If you add the name Harper Bright, H A R P E R B R I G H T, and 10% to the listed commissions in cell cells G12 and H12, an exact match will be found and the value will be returned in D8. If there are two or more exact matches, the first matching value found in the column of identifiers will be returned. Now let's look at finding the closest match with VLOOKUP. If your final argument in your VLOOKUP function is true, VLOOKUP will search the columns of identifiers for the closest match to the value you entered in the first function argument. Note, if you omit the final argument in your VLOOKUP function, it will default to true and will search for the closest value if it cannot find an exact match. In this example, the sales team's quarterly bonus rate is dependent on their amount of sales. If they sold 10,000 worth of stock, they will get a 1% bonus. However, if they sold 100,000 worth of stock, they will get a 10% bonus. But it's not often the case that a salesperson will get exactly 10,000 worth of stock or exactly 100,000 worth of stock. So we'll need to look at the closest match to what they have sold. You can activate cell E3 by typing equals VLOOKUP and then you can enter the lookup value which will be the sales. You can then enter the table array which will be the bonus rate and then enter the column index number which will be 2 because we want our answer to come from the second column. And lastly, we'll enter our range lookup, which will be true, so that we can find a closest match. The value 6% will be returned, as 60,000 is the closest match to 69.485. You can use flashful to get the rest of the commission rates. If you use false for an exact match as the final argument in your function, the lookup column does not have to be sorted. However, if you are using true as your final argument, the values in your lookup column should be sorted in ascending order. As VLOOKUP will use the first match it finds and you may get an unexpected result. If you are using text values in your lookup column, avoid using leading or trailing spaces as this also may produce unexpected results. The HLOOKUP function is similar to the VLOOKUP except that it searches the lookup values in the first row of a horizontal table. The H means horizontal. If successful, the function will look down the specified row and return the value it finds there. As an example, the HLOOKUP formula is used in cell C3 to find the manager for a sales employee. We locate the exact match in the first row of, ma of the manager's table and return the value from the second row. To insert the HLOOKUP function on the Formulas tab in the Functions Library group, click Lookup and Reference. Then click HLOOKUP and enter the argument. The lookup value will be B3. The table array will be B6 to G7, which is the department managers. The row index number will be 2. This is the row number in the table that contains the data you want the formula to return. The range lookup is the value that determines how Excel searches for the lookup value in the first row. If false, HLOOKUP returns the first exact match for the value. If true and no exact match is found, the function returns the closest value. We will use false as an exact match which will return the value Edwin Rogue. Now let's look at the functions index and match. The basic lookup functions such as VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP, where you find a value in a column or row and then return the offset value, will satisfy most of your needs. However, a few operations require more sophisticated functions such as index and match. 
Common lookup functions can only look for data in one direction. However, you may need to look for data behind your lookup value. We can use index and match to retrieve a value anywhere in a table. We'll start by doing the functions individually and then we'll combine them. Let's start with the index function. Index returns a value of a cell at the intersection of a row and a column inside a reference. We want to use the index function to look up the discount of 12 trees. Here's an example of how to do it. You can follow these steps to insert the index function to a formula. On the Formulas tab in the Functions Library group, click Lookups and References, and then click Index. In the Functions Argument dialog box, enter the index function arguments. For the array, you can put B3 to F8. For the row number, you can add 4. This is the number of the row in the reference from which to return the value. For the column number, you can add 3. This is the number of columns in the reference from which to return the value. You can omit the column number if the reference is a single column. And then click OK. The idea is that you use match to get the row numbers and the column numbers depending on how your table is laid out, and then use index to return the value you need. Now let's look at the match function. The match function looks through a row or a column of cells for a value. If match finds that value, it returns the relative numerical position in that row or column. Now let's use match in a formula. Sticking with the same example, let's use match to figure out what row the value trees is in. You can use the following steps. On the Formulas tab in the Functions Library group, click Lookups and References and then click Match. Your lookup value is the value you want to find, which is trees. Your lookup array is the column you want to find it in, which is A3 to A8. Now you can choose your match type, and you have three choices. Zero, this finds the first value with the exact match, and can be in any order. One, finds the largest value less than or equal to your lookup value, and this must be in ascending order. Negative one, finds the smallest value that is greater than or equal to your lookup value. This lookup array must be in descending order. You can select zero for an exact match. The result for trees is the row four. Let's use match again to figure out what column is the closest match to 12. You can follow these steps. Type equals, match, and open bracket. The lookup value is the value you want to find, which will be 12. The lookup array is the column you want to find it in, which is B2 to F2. And then you can choose your match type from the three choices. We cannot use 0 as 12 does not have an exact match. However, we can use 1 to find the largest value less than or equal to the lookup value, as this array is arranged in ascending order. We could not use minus 1 because the array is not arranged in descending order. The result will be number 3. Now let's combine the index and match formulas. We can take the two match formulas and use them to replace the 4 and the 3 in the original index function. The result will be an index match match formula. To combine the index and match functions, you can cut the match formula we used to look for trees and replace the four in the index function with it. Then cut the match formula for the amount of trees and replace the three in the index function with it. The result is 
12 trees will get a 2,500 discount. Since we used a cell reference in the match formulas to find trees and to find 12, we can change those cell references. For example, we can change trees to flowers and we can change the amount to, for example, 16. The answer will now be 563. Congratulations! Now you have a dynamic index match match formula. Wow! That was a lot to take in. But I hope you have a better understanding of these lookup functions. If you have any questions, you're welcome to ask them in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel to keep seeing more awesome Excel training videos. In the next video, we'll learn how to apply advanced date and time formats. Thank you for watching another video brought to you by Advanced Excel Training. I look forward to hosting you in the next video. I'm Deborah Gray. Until next time, happy Advanced Excel Training.